Hello and welcome to the following lesson on experimental gas laws, which is part of the thermal physics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding and describing the experimental properties of gases. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to state the experimental gas laws, calculate an increase in pressure of a gas when it's heated or compressed, and then state what is meant by an isothermal change. So we're going to be looking at the following parts of the specification 3.6.2.2 ideal gases. Now to help define and understand the properties of a gas, consider a gas to consist of one particle in a box. Now in reality a gas consists of billions and billions of particles in a box which is just a container. Now the first property of a gas is the volume which we denote with the symbol V which is the space occupied by the particles that make up the gas. So in the example of it being a particle in a box it is the space of the box. So the volume is measured in meters cubed. Now it's important to note that the volume of a gas is not the volume of the individual gas particles, rather it's the volume of space between the gas particles. Now gas particles can be considered to have a negligible volume compared to the volume of the actual gas itself. The second property of a gas is the temperature, which is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in the gas, which in our previous example is the speed of the particle. Now we measure temperature in Kelvin. Now there's a directly proportional relationship between the average kinetic energy of a gas particle and the average temperature of, and the absolute temperature, sorry, of the gas. Now the absolute temperature of a gas is given when the temperature is measured in Kelvin. Now the third property of a gas is the pressure, which is given the symbol P. Now when a gas particle collides with the walls of its box, it causes a pressure. So pressure is given by the equation force over area. So pressure is the force per unit area exerted by the gas. Now pressure is measured in pascals, where one pascal is equal to a pressure of one newton per square meter. Now pressure is caused by the collisions of the gas particles with the surface of the container it is in. It is not caused by the collisions of gas particles with each other because due to their respective sizes it's very unlikely that gas particles would collide with each other. Now when physicists realised that gases could have their volumes, their temperatures and their pressures measured we could look at working out laws to link these quantities. Now these laws are called the experimental gas laws because the laws were devised from experimental results and they were not derived from theoretical discussion. Now in the 17th century Robert Boyle published a paper linking two properties of gases, the pressure of a gas and the volume of a gas. So the linking of pressure and volume became known as Boyle's law. Now Boyle carried out his work with apparatus such as the following. Now it was found that for a constant temperature that the gas pressure and the volume of a gas are inversely proportional. So we could say P is directly proportional to 1 over V, or we could also write it as pressure times by volume equals a constant, which you can symbolize as PV equals constant. But please be aware, like mentioned before, this equation only works when the temperature is constant, as the temperature of the gas can affect its pressure and volume. So we refer to this law as an isothermal change, because iso means the same and thermal means temperature, so saying that's an isothermal event indicates that the temperature has not changed. Now this idea of pressure and volume for a gas being inversely proportional links into our model of a particle in a box, because if the temperature is constant it means that the particle in the box is travelling at a fixed constant speed. So what this means is if we increase the size of the container of the box that the gas particle has fewer collisions in the same time with the sides of the container because it has to travel further before it collides with the slide. So the bigger box that the gas is in, the fewer collisions with the surface, whilst the smaller the box, the, the more collisions with the surface, because if we make the box that the gas is in smaller, the gas particle will collide with the box more often since it has less distance to travel at the same speed. So this shows us that for a constant temperature, the pressure and volume vary with each other. So as pressure increases, volume decreases, and vice versa. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional 
to each other. Now we say that any gas that follows Boyle's law is an ideal gas. A gas at a very high, temp high pressure does not obey Boyle's law. So the gas is no longer ideal as the molecules are so close to each other that the molecules own volume now becomes significant. So our experimental results of Boyle's law follow the following pattern. So we can see it in this particular graphical representation that the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional. So when one value increases, the other value decreases by the same factor. Now it's important to note that this particular graph can be repeated for any temperature as long as it's kept constant throughout the investigation. Now what we tend to find is the higher the temperature of the gas, the steeper the gradient of the line, as shown in the following graph. Now these are still isothermal changes since the temperature is fixed throughout the investigation. Now we can also plot pressure against one over volume, which gives us a straight line through the origin. So we can now see that when we say y equals mx plus c, that p is going to be the value for y, 1 over v is the value for x, given our constant as m. So in this graph, the gradient of the line gives you your Boyle's law constant. Now the second law is called Charles's law, because a hundred years later in France, Jacques Charles used the work of Boyle to see if he could produce a flying machine. Now Charles was convinced that the properties of gases, hydrogen in particular, was key to humans flying. So in 1783, Charles carried out the first manned hydrogen balloon flight in history. Now in 1787, Charles did an experiment where he filled five balloons to the same volume with different gases. He then raised the temperature of the balloons to about 80 degrees Celsius and noticed that they all increased in volume by the same amount. Now this was true when he used the temp when he changed the temperature by the same value and he measured it in an absolute scale such as Kelvin. Now he noticed this was true for all types of gases as well. So in fact this experiment was referenced by Guy Lussac in 1802 when he published a paper on the relationship between the volume and the temperature of a gas. Now Charles Law states that under constant pressure an ideal gas's volume is proportional to its absolute temperature so V is directly proportional for T. So when the pressure on a sample of gas is held constant the temperature in kelvins and the volume of the gas will be directly related. So it was found that for a constant pressure that the gas volume divided by the gas temperature is a constant value for each gas. So we can say that volume over absolute temperature is equal to a constant, but only when the temperature of the gas is measured in Kelvin. Now once again, this follows our model of a particle in a box, because if the pressure is constant, it means that there's the same number of collisions with, of the gas particle with the side of the container every second. So what this tells us is, if we make the box bigger, then the gas molecules would have to move faster to then make sure you have the same amount of collisions every second. So therefore, the gas particle must move faster to collide the same number of times, so the temperature must be going up. And if the box was made smaller, the molecules have to move slower to make sure there's the same amount of collisions per unit time, so the gas particles are moving slower to have the same number of collisions every second, so the temperature is going down. So this shows us that as the volume increases, the pressure increases, so they're in direct proportion. Now, once again, we say that any gas which follows Charles law is an ideal gas. Now any change where the pressure stays constant, such as in Charles law, we say is an isobaric change, because iso means the same and baric means pressure. So the experimental results for Charles' law uh, follow this particular pattern. Now notice that measuring the volume and absolute temperature of a gas gives a straight line through the origin. Now the gradient is the proportionality constant between the two and it's important to note that this shows V and T are directly proportional because the graph is a straight line through the origin. Now when work is done to change the volume of a gas, energy must be transferred by heating to the gas to keep that pressure constant. So we can also say that work done is equal to pressure times by change in volume. So work done is equal to the pressure times by that change in volume and you can work this out experimentally with the following bits of equipment. So what you would do is you would heat a substance, okay, normally with sulfuric acid, the volume of the gas in the syringe would be measured, the temperature of the flask is measured, so you would vary your value of temperature and you would measure the volume of the gas to then see if you can derive Charles' 
Charles's law with experimental values. Now, when you graph Charles's law, it was found that the volume of a gas always became zero at minus 273 degrees Celsius, or zero Kelvin. So Charles's law was the first to predict the existence of absolute zero, the lowest possible temperature in the universe. Now, at certain temperatures, the gases had no volume. Now, why was this? Well, this is because the particles do not move, so therefore cannot collide with the surface, and as the particles themselves have no volume, therefore, as a result, there's no going to be no pressure, there's going to be no volume. So therefore, the gas has no volume and it has no movement of particles. Now, it was important to note that this temperature of absolute zero was found to be the same for every gas in the universe. Now, originally, the value of absolute zero was extrapolated from experimental values at much higher temperatures. Now, when the law was first devised by Charles, it was ignored because it was postulated that the law only worked for high temperatures and this law did not hold true for low temperatures. It was only William Thompson or Lord Kelvin who realised what this meant and devised absolute zero. Now, as you will realise from the graphs, as the x-intercept of a volume temperature graph gives you absolute zero, the graphs of volume temperature are slightly different when the different temperature scales are used. So the graph on the left hand side is when the temperature is given in the Kelvin scale, while the graph on the right hand side is when the temperature is given in the Celsius scale. So the x-intercept in the left hand side graph is given at zero Kelvin, whilst the x-intercept on the right hand side is given at minus 273 degrees Celsius. Now the last law is the pressure law, where it was postulated that the pressure of a gas of fixed mass and fixed volume is directly proportional to the gas's absolute temperature. So what this means is that if a gas's temperature increases, then so does its pressure if the mass and the volume of the gas are held constant. So this law has a very simple mathematical form if the temperature is measured on an absolute scale, such as Kelvin. So P is directly proportional to T. Or we could also say that pressure over absolute temperature, P over T, is equal to a constant, but it only is true if the temperature is given in Kelvins. Now again, this follows our model of a molecule in a box, because if the volume in the, is constant, it means that the box is, has a fixed size. So if we increase the speed in which the molecule is moving, it will hit the side of the box more often. So when the temperature increases, the gas particles are moving faster, giving more collisions a second, increasing the temperature. Now, if we slow the molecule down, it will hit the size of the container less often. So when the gas particles move slower, it has a lower temperature. So therefore, there are less collisions every second, so the pressure is lower. So what this tells us is that as the temperature of a gas increases, the pressure of the gas increases. There's a directly proportional relationship. So the experimental results for the pressure law follow the following pattern. Now we can show this in graphical form as well. So you can see P plotted against T. Now again, measuring the pressure and absolute temperature of a gas gives a straight line graph through the origin, where the gradient is the proportionality constant between the two. Now again, this shows that P and T are in direct proportion as it is a straight line through the origin. Now again, this is only true if the volume is kept constant throughout the investigation. Now again, as the x-intercept of a pressure temperature graph graph gives absolute zero, the graphs are slightly different when different temperature scales are used. So on the left hand side we've got the, when the temperature is given on the Kelvin scale, and on the right hand side when the temperature is given on the Celsius scale. Once again our x-intercept in the Kelvin scale is at zero Kelvin, whilst our x-intercept in the Celsius scale is at minus 273 degrees Celsius. So let's summarise what we've learned in today's lesson. We can state the experimental gas laws derived by physicists when examining gas behaviour. Now in these laws, temperature must be stated in Kelvin. The first law is Boyle's law, which is an isothermal change law, where PV is equal to constant, or you could say P1V1 equals P2V2, or the change in pressure over pressure equals the change in volume over volume. The second law is Charles' law, where you can say that V over T is equal to a constant, or V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, or the change in volume over volume is equal to the change in 
changing temperature over temperature. This law is an isobaric change because pressure must be kept constant. Now we can also work out the work done uh, when you change the um, temperature of a gas by doing work done is equal to pressure times by changing volume. Now our final law is the pressure law which says that P over T is equal to a constant. We can also say this is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2 or the change in P over P is equal to the change in T over T. Now this law is true for, a, for constant volume. So for the gas laws any of these interpretations can be used to solve problems. So to summarise we should be able to have the gas laws as experimental relationships between P, V and T and the mass of a gas. Now if you've been successful and learnt in this lesson you should be able to state the experimental gas laws, calculate the increase of the pressure of a gas when it's heated or compressed, and state what is meant by an isothermal change. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the experimental gas laws, which is part of the thermal physics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.